Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics, and in this video I'd like to discuss a letter sent to the lingering Nadine Doris, as one of her Tory colleagues is now referring to her, by a town councillor within her constituency, asking her, given that she's not doing anything, would she like to move on, please? The council has no power to do anything, of course, but it does generate a bit of discussion about whether MPs should not have some obligations. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So Flitwick Town Council have written to Mad Nads. Now, I am going to point out, recently I had a lot of Southerners say, oh, Phil, you're pronouncing that Southern town incorrectly. It's, it's actually pronounced this way instead. So no doubt I've got people saying, actually, you'll find it's pronounced... <laughs> but Flitwick Town Council, until someone corrects me. And they've noted that Mad Nads doesn't seem to be doing any work as an MP, either locally or in Parliament, spending all her time on her television show, other personal projects such as like writing... They also note that she's not registered any comments in the Commons for over a year and is believed to have held no surgeries locally for over three years. They argue that their constituents need representation. Actually, they, they say effective representation, little dig, I think, and urge her to vacate her seat in order to trigger the by-election. Now, obviously, Nads is not going to be moved by the appeal. She will resign when she thinks it best suits her need for spiteful revenge, if indeed she resigns at all. And in fact, she's given the express the impression that she will not even be responding to this letter. Of course not, because an MP responding to a council letter within their constituency would count as doing her job as an MP, wouldn't it? Can't break her streak now. But the report further says that she might complain to the Electoral Commission about the council. I'm afraid I could not tell you on what basis, because the Express tend not to fill these details in, but to be fair to them, it is quite possible that Nads doesn't know on what basis either. She, maybe she's just going to tell, say to the Electoral Commission, hey, they've sent me a letter, it's mean, do something. But it does raise a question about the duties of an MP, doesn't it? Nadine Doris is a really good example. She's not a unique example. But it's a really good example of the fact MPs don't actually have to do anything. Once elected... There are only four ways to remove an MP. The first is, of course, a general election, but, you know, it's usually years between those. So if an MP decides to do absolutely nothing after one general election, well, you're waiting around a bit. The second is by receiving a custodial sentence, after which, depends on the nature of the custodial sentence, uh, constituents may have to sign a recall petition or it may be automatic. Um, the second... Uh, sorry, the third one is being convicted of a very specific offence, which is related to parliamentary expenses claims, which also leads to a recall petition. And the fourth is by being suspended for 10 sitting days or more by the House of Commons for, you know, whatever. More recently, we've had uh, examples of contempt, but it could be just failing some standards. Again, constituents have to sign a recall petition in that case as well to actually get rid of the MP. And that's it. That is it. Now, an MP is expected to divide their time between Westminster and their constituency as best they can. You can't have hard and fast rules, of course, because ministers, for example, need to spend more time in London with their government duties. But there is an expectation that MPs will do the following. First, carry out local surgeries in order to help their constituents with various problems. Some of them can be quite serious problems. Second, respond to concerns from constituents via other means, letter or email, for example. Third, attend in Parliament in order to vote for the measures you promised to, which is usually your party's manifesto, or against measures which conflict with what you promised to campaign for, or are just against the interests of your constituency. And fourth, to raise the profile of important issues for your constituency by speaking in Parliament and, where possible, lobbying relevant ministers. But if an MP, once elected, just decides to do whatever they please... Well, their constituency is having no representation. No one's getting any uh, help from the MP. And there isn't really anyone, not least the, of which the constituents can do about it. Now, obviously, little exception is Sinn Féin MPs do campaign specifically on the promise of not taking up their seats. But that is made explicitly clear during the election period. Um, so their voters understand that. But like a Conservative MP like Nadine Doris, they do campaign on a very specific platform and they are expected to carry out those duties. Yet, as she is making abundantly clear, she's under no legal obligation. And I wonder if it could be argued that an MP who takes up their seat in the Commons should be expected to commit to certain duties. You know, Sinn Féin don't take up their seats, so they'd be in the clear. But, you know, 
Other MPs should be expected to maintain a quota of surgeries carried out, say, uh, speeches, questions or statements in Parliament, votes attended and so on. You know, you might have a lighter requirement for MPs with government or shadowing responsibilities. You might have special dispensation if someone's like, you know, long term ill. But an expectation that some minimum level of service is carried out. I mean, after all, aren't the Tories arguing that we should have a minimum service levels for when there's a strike on? You know, because if not, if they don't meet these requirements, maybe we should have a fifth way of recalling an MP. I would still say should recall a, should have a recall petition to be signed um, and there would be nothing to stop the MP standing in the subsequent by-election as is normal. But it does seem fairly egregious for a public struggling with a severe cost of living crisis, which Parliament is already doing very little to nothing about, only to observe an MP drawing their well above average salary and doing literally nothing for it. Nothing at all. And she's supplementing this ill-gained income with television, work and writing. She's a new book coming out after the summer. Good for her, but what about her constituents? And her party can do nothing. Granted, they're not even trying. They haven't even done the minimum, like withdraw the whip for taking the piss. But they can't do anything to force the by-election. Her constituents can't do anything. There's no petition with a higher threshold requirement to activate. Being honest, I think that's a good thing. I don't think we want politically motivated petitions flying around all the time. But when does an MP, you know, when they do absolutely nothing, I think the public would expect that there should be some recourse. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.